the the gin and tonic, and I will I'll tell you a quick Dennis Lehane story as I make our gin and tonics here. Which, by the way, good good drink choice. It's kind of a warm sunny day, so this it's is a, a good midday drink. Yeah, you know? good, yeah, we're not going to crush ourselves this early. Uh, but I was at a book festival out in California, and I interviewed Dennis for uh, one of the segments, and we were at the dinner afterward. And they had this long buffet table. And at the end of the buffet table was this pool that began abruptly. So the next step after the end of the table was the deep end of the pool, which I didn't see. And we'd already had a couple of drinks. And Lahane, on thank goodness for me, was right behind me because I had my foot hovered over the deep end. I was about to plunge in. He grabbed me by the shirt collar and pulled me, pulled me back. A, really? a, a lesser man would have shoved me. Yeah. Can I grab um, a little more ice while we're yeah, doing sure. this? Sure. We are actually... Out of the ice on that oh, oh, cup. That's that was, okay. That was the extent of our ice. That's all right then. Here well, we thank go. you for the assist. You are the first to assist with the bartending. I appreciate that. Well, you know, this is a, it's a working interview, Doug. That's right. You gotta you gotta sing for your supper. Cheers. Cheers. Great man. to meet you. It's great to meet you too. Oh my goodness. Oh, that tastes good. I haven't had a gin tonic forever. For I some love reason, gin and I tonics. Doing those. There's great South African gins that are, you know, they're not floral, but they have all the botanicals. Like the gins are great. Gins are like a whole language. And I didn't know that gins, gin is originally from Holland, not from England. We think of them as so British. Yeah. And so there's some great ones with, well, I talk about it a little bit in It's in the book. And, and you also identify rum as a substandard spirit. <laughs> yes, yes. So I like, you know, rum's great if you're on a tropical vacation, but yeah. you know, like, let's be honest here. <laughs> just, well, it's just us and no one else listening. No, you, you were talking my language in the book. I love those passages on it. Mm -hmm. And I did, I just saw some article on gin. I like Hendrix. And for a while I was on a kick with Plymouth gin. Plymouth and, is naval strength. Yeah. And you know good. why it's naval strength? No. Because it's actually, the proof is high enough that it can ignite. And so the British Navy used to never leave port without it. So if they ran out of gunpowder, they could substitute the gin. That's very British. Wow. So that's the naval strength version of Plymouth. And that's the base gin. Usually when you go to Duke's, the, gr the world's greatest martini is Duke's in London. And um, there's a guy there, Alessandro, who is who's like the master martini bartender. He's the only one allowed to pour the vermouth and flick it on the carpet. Everybody else has to pour it on the tray. <laughs> and they bring the Plymouth out. It's freezing cold. And they have um, their very own vermouth. And I said to him, is it true that this vermouth, I had read this, is only here and at Buckingham Palace? And I was told, sir, if the queen wants a Duke's martini, the queen comes to Duke's. Wow. So they are very, very serious <laughs> about very their martinis. British. I've so got to go to this place. It's phenomenal, man. It's called the I mean, it's the big pour, and they have the sprig, and everything comes out just frozen. It pours like syrup. It's oh an amazing gosh. place. There's a two-martini limit, but I will tell you how you get around that is after you have two martinis, you can order like a Vesper that's like their version of a Cosmo. Mm -hmm. So you can continue drinking. They just won't serve you three because they're so strong. Wow. I, I know, you know, I, I try to stop at one. My new policy is one of either a Manhattan or a martini, and then I've got to downshift to wine. Otherwise, the next day. Right? Yeah, you I'm know, just like, I don't think I'm metabolizing the way I did when I was a younger man. You remember? Yeah, that's true. Remember Dorothy Parker's line about martinis? No. She said, one martini, I'm under the influence. Two martinis, I'm under the table. Three martinis, I'm under the host. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. She was something, man. Yeah.